Now let's talk about browser events. We've been talking about events all along. You, we have done an on-click handler, which is a shortcut to, in effect, register a click event handler, but we're just doing it with the shortcut of the on-click attribute. And then when we do a set timeout, we're actually creating a, a timer event. So the timer starts, and then when the timer expires, the event fires and our code is run. So we've been, we've been doing this all along. But there is an entire event registration system inside the browser. And we can say, I would like to register an event for something to happen on this tag. And we can hook things in all over the place. And there's a separate event registration system. OnClick is like a shortcut using an attribute that eventually registers the event on our behalf. And that's why you see the little event when you do the inspect element. And so if we take a look at the uh, code here, we're going to do the same thing that we did in o3event.htm, which we've seen before. And then we're gonna do it again in 10-event.htm. And we're gonna, but we're gonna show kind of the more generic way of doing it. So in o3event.htm, we have an onclick method, We've done this before, and there's a, it calls my funk when that method is clicked. And if you do an inspect element, you see that that anchor tag has an event on it. The kind of more pure way to do it, the, the where we're really explicitly registering the event, these two things are, for all intents and purposes, equivalent, is we're going to, instead of having the onclick method on the anchor tag, we're going to have an ID equals zap. And again, we have to put the ID on so we can get our hands on it inside JavaScript. So we create an uh, H1 and a paragraph with an anchor tag in it. Then we start our JavaScript. And the JavaScript starts by defining a function. doesn't do anything. It just defines the function. And then we call document.getElementById zap. Now that is grabbing that anchor tag. And then it calls an element method called addEventListener. And it's got two parameters. The first parameter is I'm interested in the click event. I want to listen for click events. And when click events happen, call my func. Now again, first class functions, there's no parenthesis on my func. That is a function reference that we defined three lines earlier, right? And so it accomplishes the same thing. And if we look at 10event.htm and we take a look at it, you see that the anchor tag with the ID of zap doesn't have an on click on it but it has a registered event. And that's because we registered the event using JavaScript. Now, if we click on it, it does the exact same thing. That event is triggered. It looks up and says, well, when a click happens, I'm supposed to call my func. And so this notion of adding event listeners is a more general purpose notion than simply on click. I, think, I like to think of on click as a shortcut to registering it. Now you might say, it's a lot shorter. <laughs> and one thing about JavaScript is it's a bit wordy at times, right? Document.getElementById.addEventListener, a lot of a lot of JavaScript, but it does what you need it to do. Now I'm not saying you shouldn't use onclick, um, but I want to show you the more general way of doing it. There are other kinds of events that we can connect to. And in, so this in this case, I'm going to just have a header and no paragraph. And then in my JavaScript, I'm going to create a function. And in that function, I'm going to log the current height and width of the window. Okay? When this function is called, it's only going to log it. Now, what I'm going to say is window.addEventListener. Now remember, document.addEventListener, that's a different thing, right? Window.addEventListener is adding an event to the window. Remember how the window is the thing that gets larger and smaller and has scroll bars, etc. So I'm saying I would like to register a bit of my code to be called every time the window is resized. That's what quote resize quote is. My func is the thing to call. So now what happens is you display this and then you start changing the size of the window. And on your console log, it's a brrr, zoom, you know, window height 135, 136, 137. So as you're making that window larger and smaller, your code is being called every time. Now, why might, you want, why might you want to do this? Well, one of the big things in website design is to do what's called responsive design. And that's as the thing gets narrower or higher or smaller, like mobile, 
you want to change the UI. You might have on a big screen, you might have a more complex UI, and then on a small screen, you might want to have a, a narrow, uh, a more narrow UI. Now, often things like Bootstrap take care of all this and, uh, for us, but still, Bootstrap needs to get their hands on the resize event so they know, whoa, the screen size changed, so I need to kind of tweak the markup a little bit. So this is an example of a window event that allows you to render an opinion as to what you want to happen every time the screen resizes. Now another issue that you that's an important event to know about is what's called the content load complete event. Modern web pages are very very complex. I mean, I the things I've been showing you in this in this series of lectures are simple because I, you know, I want you to be able to see them on a on a slide, but real web pages with menus and pretty pictures and colors and spinners, all that stuff, right? There's so many things. You gotta download the HTML, then you got a bunch of CSS and some images and JavaScript libraries. And so sometimes you're gonna just get like 100 assets when you download a page. The first one is the HTML. And so the problem is, is it can take a while for all these things to get orchestrated by the browser. It reads the HTML, it sees a CSS, it loads the CSS, it sees a JavaScript thing, loads the JavaScript, da 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 da, and then it's got some images and it takes some time and it does this all interleaved and in parallel. And eventually you want to know, are you done yet? Are just, are you done? And so if we take a look at a typical, at the page of Django for Everybody, we see about uh, 30 requests and many requests, and you'd, you'd like to know when that's all done because you can't write JavaScript that, that references a tag that doesn't exist yet. Or if you, have, you want to write JavaScript that does something to an image like changes its size or checks something or hides it or shows it, you got to wait till the image is there before you start messing with it, right? So there is a special event. It's pretty simple. And in this, you use a script tag near the end of your body. So... Um, so we have a function, my func, and in that function, the, we'll console log the DOM is landed, and then we're going to add event listener. And this is a document event because this is DOM content loaded, not window, but DOM content. Document add event listener. The event name is DOM content loaded. That's a hard coded string. And I say, please call my function when all the files have been loaded and we're ready and the, and the user can see the page. And so in this one, it's really short. <clears throat> it's just that that console, the, the, the my func happens after the content is loaded and after all the derivative things have been loaded, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.